folks, we're going to go ahead and get started. Just want to say thank you for uh, coming this evening. Uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, uh, these two uh, speakers here tonight. Uh, first, uh, I'll introduce uh, Trish Griffin. Uh, she's the uh, registered dietitian uh, through Muscle Milk. And uh, also with us this evening is Beth Miller. She is the director of uh, performance nutrition at UCLA. Uh, so we're going to put on a, a presentation tonight. And uh, I really encourage you to participate uh, during this. If you have questions, feel free to, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, you'll be rewarded for doing so, for participating. All right, so I'm going to introduce uh, to the mic over to uh, Trish Griffin. everyone for making it up tonight. We really appreciate you being here. I'm really excited about this program. It's been a year of long effort of collaboration between a sports dietitian organization called CPSDA, which is the Collegiate Professional Sports Dietitians Association, and Muscle Milk. Um, I'm a registered dietitian and uh, also the sports nutritionist for the brand for Muscle Milk, and I've collaborated with this group and created this really awesome presentation. And you. I'm so happy to announce that this is our inaugural event, so you guys can give us feedback and, and, and help us improve it every time we give it. Um, we're going to be launching nationally after this, so you guys are part of the history. Um, I also wanted to um, thank Jess and Beth for coming and, and having their, serving their role as part of this. Beth is actually quite, besides being a dietitian, she's quite the athlete. Um, she got her bachelor's degree at um, Tennessee Tech University, and she was the captain of the varsity track and field and um, cross country teams. She also has her master's in exercise physiology and sports nutrition. Um, she also has participated in helping athletes at Florida State and University of Tennessee. And I just wanted to um, reiterate the fact we're hoping to get, we have a small group, so we really want to get participation. We have some really cool stuff to provide. Please help yourself with products, bars, drinks, whatever you like, fill up a bag, take it home, whatever you need to do. And then we'll stick around afterwards for more questions. So we're here for you to help educate um, your student athletes and your students on how to fuel their bodies better and um, provide optimum performance both on the field, in the gym, and in the classroom. And here's that. Right. For that welcome, and again to Jess for allowing us to be here tonight and coordinating this. And thanks to all of you for coming. Um, how many of you remember back in the fall when I came? Did anyone happen to, to make that presentation? Awesome. Well, thanks for coming back. Um, we have some of the same information, but plenty of new information for you, and obviously the exciting uh, muscle milk uh, products for you to try out tonight. Um, so let's get started here. Here's a quick overview of some of the topics we're going to be talking about tonight. We're going to go into our foundation nutrients for performance nutrition, um, followed by, of course, our hydration, and then recovery. How do you recover from your workouts day in and day out? Um, talk about our key micronutrients that are specifically focused for teens. Um, look at some performance plates, which is a way for you to apply this in the dining halls, at home, um, when you're building your meals on your own. And then we'll talk about how we put all this together and actually apply it. Um, go into some healthy weight tips as well, whether you're trying to gain weight, lose weight, talk about eating on the go, because we know we live a busy lifestyle these days, but eating healthy is still important. Um, and then we'll look a little bit at um, supplements and how to make sure we're staying safe for our sport. So first off, we're putting all of our pieces together. So to build the student athlete, you're made up basically of several pieces of a puzzle. And nutrition, you can see, fits right there into the middle in order to hold all of these together. To hold your skills, your mental conditioning, your physical conditioning, and your team together, you need to have a proper nutrition foundation in order to improve your performance. So, performance nutrition. It stands for several different things. First off, it helps you to be able to get more out of your nutrition, to get more out of your training. It takes you to that next level. So right now you're at the high school age, but soon you'll be moving on, hopefully maybe with aspirations to move to the college level. Um, nutrition will play an important role right now in order to get you there. It helps you gain that competitive, competitive advantage over your opponents. It improves your energy and your focus while you're on the field, on the court. 
and it helps to fill you for back-to-back -back games and then recover you faster so you're ready to go for the next game. Um, in my role, I get to work with several different types of athletes every day, those who take what I teach them seriously, those who maybe don't, don't think it's as important, um, but those that really do take into account what I'm teaching to them, take it into their lives and apply it. It's awesome when you see a great outcome um, to have their nutrition actually work for their performance. Um, I've been at UCLA for about a year and a half now, have some awesome stories that I could share with you, um, but one athlete as I was driving up here particularly came to my mind. Um, he's currently a junior on our men's water polo team. Uh, last year when I met him, he was a sophomore, couldn't keep the weight on. Um, if you're familiar with the sport of water polo, they're burning a ton of calories, working very hard there in the pool. So that's what we always struggle with, is keeping the weight on during their tough training months in the summer, and then especially through season all the way through December, because their season's lasting pretty much from July all the way through December. Um, so he came in to me right away when I first got to UCLA, and he's like, Beth, I'm really struggling to keep the weight on. I've dropped about 20 pounds since we started training a month and a half ago. Um, so we came up with this awesome plan and the, I've never seen an athlete kind of take on and follow to the T exactly, um, exactly what I've taught him. Now we come around to this season this following year, and he didn't even have to have any meetings with me. He's like, hey, I still have that plan from last fall. I'm doing this, this, and this, except I'm out of my muscle milk. Can I have a little bit more, <laughs> more muscle milk? Because he was taking a muscle milk shake every night before bed. So he knew um, day in and day out what it took for him to have to keep that weight on, and he was pre-planning um, to get into that and then succeeding. And um, last year led his team to a national championship, and this year we unfortunately lost in the semis. But um, he's a great captain of the team. He knows he preaches to his teammates that nutrition is important. Um, so he's a good model of, of our brand and of what we do as dietitians. All right, so now we're going to get into our foundation nutrients. Our foundation nutrients are made up of three uh, what we call macronutrients. Can anyone list our macronutrients for me? <clears throat> Give me one of them. You can just call it out. What are our main nutrients? Good, carbohydrates. That's one. Over in the corner there. Right over there. Where's your hand? <laughs> what's another one? Fat. Fat. Good. And what's our last one? The fat. Protein. Good. Carbs, fats, and protein. So first we're going to talk about protein. What is the main role that protein plays in our body? Energy. Build muscle. Build muscle. Good. Does anyone know another one? No? It's okay. Who said build muscle? Raise your hand. Nice and high. Look at you. Oh, well, in the back there. Mm -hmm. All right. So as an athlete, you require more protein than the average person, um, than your average uh, classmate sitting next to you who may not be um, working out or exercising as much as you are. So as we already said, protein helps repair, grow, and maintain your muscle mass. It also supports your muscles, bones, ligaments, and tendons inside of your body. One that is uncommon that people don't know quite as much is that it actually helps move oxygen to your muscles, helps you maintain a healthy weight, helps with immune function, healing of any injuries or, uh, that you may have, and it also helps to reduce muscle soreness post-exercise. So if you think of your body, think of your muscles as a brick wall. Uh, a third of your, or a third of the protein in your body is muscles. Um, the wall is made out of protein, and that's continually building up, breaking down just throughout the day, whether you're exercising or not. However, exercise exacerbates that. Um, and one thing is that protein cannot be stored in the body, so you have to take it in daily um, through the foods that you eat in order to build that brick wall. So you think about exercise, you're breaking down that wall even faster than you would be if you were just um, sitting in the classroom all day. Uh, protein consumed after exercise helps you to rebuild that wall, um, and there's a time frame that we're going to get into in order to build that wall faster. Um, and then, how many have heard of this amino acid leucine? Has anyone heard of that before? So this is an essential amino acid. By essential amino acid, we mean that you, your body cannot make that, so you have to consume that. Um, and recent research is showing that by consuming about two to three grams of leucine through a meal or a snack immediately post-exercise is what you need to optimally repair um, and build your muscle mass. 
So leucine is commonly found in meats, chicken, turkey, fish, um, high in eggs, and uh, dairy products as well. Um, so as we had said, uh, the exercise, breaking down that wall, within 30 to 45 minutes, we want to build it in immediately after to help improve your training. So what is your number? This is a question that I get a lot from athletes that'll pop in, hey, how much protein do I need um, throughout the day? This is a quick and easy equation for you to utilize uh, to help determine how much protein you need for your, based on your body weight. The intensity of your activity, duration, frequency of your exercise is all gonna play a role in how much protein you personally need. Um, so that's why we have a range on here. We don't give just one set number, because it's going to change each day, depending on how hard you work out, how long you're working out. Um, so for a base target, divide your body weight in pounds by two, because we're looking at about 0.5 grams per pound of body weight of protein to help you um, maintain and build your muscle mass. Heavy training day, you bump that up to almost two times, so it's 0 0.9 um, 0.9 grams of protein per body weight. Um, for a high intensity target range. And then you're going to probably fall somewhere in between that range on, on a daily basis. Um, does anyone have any questions on that, on calculating protein needs? Yeah. Can you do a body weight and do the algorithm? So, I like, so say okay. somebody weighs 150 pounds. Yeah, so 150 pounds, then you would divide that by two, or it would be multiplying it by 0.5. So then you would need roughly 75 grams of protein. And then you do that, take um, 150 pounds times 0.9 to get that higher range. Okay. Any other questions? All right, and then this is a great chart um, of easy, on-the-go options that you can get some high-quality protein through. Um, vacuum sealed tuna pouches. These are things that I always send my athletes on road trips with. Because um, you can take them anywhere, high amount of protein. Um, deli meats, nuts, nut butters, hard-boiled eggs, cheeses, uh, beans, soy and veggie burgers, cottage cheese, uh, beef jerky, turkey jerky, all awesome source, portable sources of protein. And then obviously down right here on this right-hand corner, all of these wonderful products that you get to sample tonight. Uh, Muscle Milk has many products that uh, give you high-quality protein in different forms. Protein, uh, powders, ready to drink beverages and um, shakes and smoothies, and then these new tasty bars that they have for you tonight. Um, when it comes to protein, your timing is everything. Um, you want to spread it out evenly throughout the day in order to maximize your muscle growth. Uh, so you don't want to overload your protein intake at night or have too much of it in the morning. But make sure it's evenly spaced um, throughout the day, starting with breakfast. So breakfast is an extremely important meal. How many in here are breakfast eaters? Good, if it wasn't 100%, I hope one day we get 100% of that. Uh, breakfast is extremely important for the student athlete to start your day off um, well, helps improve your thinking, helps improve your activity level for the day, keeps you full, um, ready to go for whatever you have coming at you. And it's even stronger if it's, highly, um, if it's boosted highly with protein. Uh, and then also recent research um, is showing before bed that a small protein snack will actually improve your uh, muscle recovery throughout the night while you're at rest. So here's a graph describing what I was just talking about. Um, on the left side here would be our inadequate protein distribution throughout the day and on the right side is more what you want it to look like. Um, this is just showing our meals, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner, roughly about 30 grams of protein at each meal, um, plus or minus, just depending on your personal needs. Um, but then what's not on this graph is also snacks. So when I'm working with an athlete, I'll always tell them that we want our snack, we want protein paired at every meal and every snack, uh, because it keeps you full. Um, you want to keep those muscles working throughout the day as well. Um, and what they hear me talk about a lot is our gold medal snacks. So constantly, a gold medal snack would be pairing a lean protein with a high quality carbohydrate, which we're gonna get into um, carbohydrates in a second here. Uh, but protein and carbs work together synergistically to make sure that you're maintaining that muscle mass and then also optimizing it to, uh, to grow to their biggest potential. Um, actually, 
Any questions on this before I move on? All right, jumping back. What's the most optimal range of leucine that we want to get um, immediately post-workout? How many grams of leucine? Two to three. I don't know where that answer came to, but good. It was correct. <laughs> Two to three grams. And then um, list me a uh, source. Where can you get leucine in? One food item. Meats. Eggs. Good. Meats and eggs. Good job. All right. Carbohydrates. What is one of the biggest roles of carbohydrates? Fuel. <laughs> right here? In the front? What did you say? Fuel. Fuel, good. It is the main source of um, energy for high intensity exercise um, and just to fuel your body. It's the quickest source um, working for your body. So we always talk about food is fuel. That's my mantra. That's any sports dietitian's mantra pretty much, that food is our fuel. Um, fuel your body like you need to add uh, gas to your car. Um, carbohydrates are stored in your muscle and they're the quickest source of energy that we get um, because they don't require oxygen to be burned and to be used, so you can use them quick. So if you have to start and go from zero to a quick sprint, you're going to be using carbohydrates, which is why a very low carbohydrate diet is, um, can actually have some negative effects for, uh, for athletes. And then also, the one which is why I just spoke about those gold medal snacks, is they actually help your body to use the protein that you consume and to use the fats that you consume. Um, for growing and repairing your muscles and to provide you with energy. So the way that I kind of describe it to my athletes is that carbohydrates are almost like the key to unlock the protein to get into your muscles. Without, without adequate carbohydrate, your muscles will not absorb as much of the protein that it needs to. And then, like I just said, eating too little carbohydrates may actually negatively impact your athletic performance as well as your academic performance because your brain um, needs the carbohydrates to run. So we're going to see a lot of performance plates in a second here. Um, your daily carbohydrate needs, though, will vary depending upon your um, activity level, depending upon your sport. Um, however, most athletes, um, no matter what sport you're in, need at least half of their calories to come from carbohydrate foods. The more active that you are, the more carbohydrates that you need because why? They provide us with fuel, energy. Good. Um, all right, so provide me with some examples of carbohydrate foods. Let's go by raising your hands. Pasta. Pasta, good. Bread. Bread. Rice. Rice. Okay, so we just listed a bunch of grains. Where else do we get carbohydrates from? Fruit. Fruit, good. Where else? Vegetables. Vegetables? Yes. Anywhere else? Fruit in the back of the vegetables over here. We also get it from our dairy products, so milk and yogurt have carbohydrates, um, beans and legumes. Um, and then they're also found in sweets and desserts and your uh, your general sports products, so uh, sugary fruit and sugary drinks, um, sports bars, sports gels, sports drinks. Um, we divide our carbohydrates up into fast carbs versus slow carbs. Anyone want to take a crack at what a fast carb is? Sugar. Sure. So all carbohydrates are sugars. It just depends. They're all they're all a little bit. They're built a little bit differently, so they work inside the body a little bit differently. Fruit. Refined carbohydrates. Refined. That's an example of one. Yeah. Anyone have like kind of definition or not? Simple sugars. Yeah. So fast acting carbs are those that give us the quick energy. They're easier to digest. So that's why the refined ones we fall into this category because they'll uh, we, our body breaks them down faster. Um, so they are best eaten right before or during exercise. So examples that you all already listed are going to be the white breads, um, bagels, fruit snacks, jellies, um, any fresh fruits, um, sports bars and gels. And then we go over to the right side column and we have our slow carbs. So slow carbs are built a little bit more complex. It takes the body a little bit longer to break them down. Um, which is why we want to eat them about two to four hours before exercise because they provide that longer lasting energy. 
Um, if you're eating any of these complex carbs a little bit closer to exercise, then you're putting yourself at risk of potentially having some GI distress uh, because they do have more fiber. Um, but that obviously just depends on your own personal digestive system. But we typically recommend um, our brown rice, our whole grain breads, oatmeals, beans, things like that to be a little bit further before exercise or then any time after. Any questions on slow versus fast carbs? No? I have one. Yeah? So you're saying eat the meals two to four hours before with the slow carbs? Right. When I was growing up, everyone used to always say that I'm carving up the night before. Does that make any sense? <laughs> so, so there are carbohydrate loading strategies out there. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So um, there are definitely a lot of myths out there with carb loading. But that, So carb loading, if you are uh, participating in one of those strategies, you would utilize more of um, these slow carbs to be able to saturate your muscles with the glycogen. Um, so yeah, that's why we say any time after, but if you're looking at like that pre-game setting, which we're going to get into more detail, you don't want to go much closer than those two hours. Any other questions? Okay. All right, and last we have fats. Anyone want to give me a roll of fats in the body? Especially for athletes. They provide energy, stored energy. Good, yeah, long-term energy. Anything else? <laughs> Got the first one? All right, so he grabbed the first two. So they're that long-lasting fuel. So those longer, um, lower-intensity exercises, so a marathon runner, they're going to be burning a lot of fat for fuel. Or some of those slower paced start and go um, sports. Uh, you use, you will start using fats for fuel because you don't need it to work as quickly as if you're going um, to sprint. Then they provide the stored energy. So we do store fat in our body and we do use it for long-term energy while we're just sitting in class. Uh, the third one down is one that I talk about a lot um, with athletes is inflammation. You're working out a lot, you're hard on your body, so you have a lot of inflammation in your joints. Our omega-3 fatty acids, which are found in um, our healthier sources of fat, will help decrease that inflammation. Um, they help us to absorb our fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. Um, and eating too little fat can decrease your overall energy as well as weaken your immune system. Um, if you walk into any collegiate dining hall that's geared towards athletes, uh, you might see a stop and go light um, coating system on the foods. We use it a lot. Um, green light, yellow light, red light. So we use it especially for our fats. So any fats that fall into this green light, green means go. And any of these that are listed up here right now are what we call our polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats. Or as you might hear as called the healthy fats versus the unhealthy fats. Um, so that comes in our fatty fish, salmon, tuna. That's where we get those omega-3s. And omega-3s help with what? Anyone? Joints. Did you just said it? Joints. Yep. Inflammation. Good. Joint and inflammation. Um, our oils, oil-based dressings, olives, um, nuts, nut butters, avocados. So if you like guacamole on your tacos, uh, you're helping to decrease your inflammation with that. Next is the yellow. So the yellow line means go slow. Um, it doesn't mean completely cut it out, but it just means think about it beforehand. Use, utilize them in, in moderation because anything that falls into the yellow category has saturated fats in it. So monounsaturated and polyunsaturated, you'll notice all of these, um, aside from the fish, are plant-based fats. Then we move to the yellow, and for the most part, they're all animal-based fats. So our higher fat meats, our processed meats like hot dogs, bologna, um, butter and lard, creamy sauces, so those Alfredo sauces, um, and fried foods, those all fall into this yellow category. Um, and when I'm going through a dining hall educating athletes, we'll talk about our green fats, or our green lights versus our yellow lights, how the green lights can actually work to decrease inflammation, whereas the yellow and the red can actually increase our inflammation. So that's why we put them on those little caution or stop light. Question? So like, are there any like types of carbohydrates where you're feeling like really exhausted or sluggish that will really give you like a build of energy and will waste a lot almost? 
So essentially any form of carbohydrate will help you boost that energy. Um, it's gonna depend on it's gonna depend on you personally. Um, on what might actually wake you up, but that's a good point. We'll talk about it with hydration too, to make sure that you're not confusing the energy that you get from like caffeine wake you up versus carbohydrate. So if you're just generally low on energy or generally low on carbohydrate, we do see a lot more of that sleepiness. So it's taking a look at your overall intake, maybe not necessarily what you're gonna have. Because like right when, I do, like, when I drink caffeine or eat sugary foods, I don't, I feel like again sleepy like an hour or two hours. Yeah, so if you have those foods that are under that fast, um, those fast carbs, they're going to give you a spike and then they're going to yeah. give you a crash. So that's why we talk about having that balanced protein all paired with carbohydrate throughout the day to see our energy levels kind of maintain themselves. And we have a good visual of that coming up here. Good question, though. Um, so then lastly, we have our red ones. Um, and this we quote as stop and think because these are the ones that you're going to want to pretty much avoid um, at all times um, because they have trans fats, hydrogenated oils. It's obviously okay if you treat yourself to a, uh, to a dessert here and there but just to be aware that the packaged baked goods do have these trans fats um, inside of them which again can help in actually increase that inflammation that we're trying to work towards decreasing as an athlete. Question in the back? There's some package, so there's there's a few packaged baked goods and it's a fresh baked cake. Like homemade. So well it all it all comes down to you know what's put, you know, what ingredients are put inside of it. So the packaged ones we see a lot more of the processed ingredients to make them maintain themselves on the shelf. Um, and that's where the hydrogenated oils typically come in. Um, if you're making the cake from scratch and you know exactly what ingredients you're putting into it, um, then you might be dealing more just with the saturated fats versus the trans. So margarine is actually worse for you than butter? Margarine, yeah, so uh, margarine has um, it's a chemical, it's a way that they're, that they're chemically made with the hydrogenated oils is a chemical transformation, um, which is further down the line than saturated fat, which is still a naturally occurring um, fat. Alright, so now moving on to hydration. Um, what's the easiest way for you to be able to test your own hydration status? Color of your urine. Yeah, color, color of your urine. So walk into any bathroom that I have in our athletic complex on UCLA, you're going to see a color chart, a pee chart. I put it right in front of their face so that they can test it on their own. Um, and I've sent them with pamphlets with it on before, and then I got a text message at night from one of my volleyball girls all excited. Hey, look what my roommate and I did. They lifted up the toilet seat. They had cut out their hydration chart that I gave them and put it right on there. It's like, I love it. It's the best way for you to be able to monitor your hydration status. And um, as an athlete, hydration is a 24-hour job. Um, you can't go to bed at night dehydrated because you're going to wake up um, even more dehydrated in the morning. Um, so for that reason, we want to drink fluids all day, every day. Um, there's water bottles over here. I encourage you to grab one. Um, just like with all of our athletes, they get a water bottle on day one of practice. Um, I would love to make it mandatory that they carry it around with them every single day, um, wherever they go, because you have to be sipping all the time. When you sweat, you're losing fluids, and you're also losing um, electrolytes. So we want to be able to bring that back in um, when we're losing it. The most preferred hydration beverages that uh, we want you to be drinking is water, sports drinks, and then 100% fruit juice. So that's like your 100% uh, apple juice, orange juices, not the fruit punches that are the sugary sweetened beverages. That falls under the category of what we would want to limit. want to limit uh, sodas, any of those sugar sweetened drinks. Um, and then third down, we want to avoid energy drinks such as the Monsters um, and then alcohol because those can actually um, inhibit your performance and your health. Um, and then right here, what we were just talking about before, you want to make sure you're not confusing that energy boost that you get from a cup of coffee with the energy boost that you get from food. Because um, caffeine will not fuel your muscles. So that alertness that you get will not last you long for an hour-long game. Um, you need that energy from food in order to get that fuel. And here we go. There's the hydration chart. So one, two, and three, you're pretty good. 
drop down the one that we get, we have a big red line um, underneath the number three. If you fall below that uh, red line, you want to get drinking. You want to stay up in one, two, and three throughout the entire day. Especially when you're going to bed, you want to make sure you're above that line um, because when you wake up in the morning, you will be further down. Um, if you're in four, five, six, you want to drink more, fall down to seven and eight, you're pretty dehydrated and you need to um, go into a little bit more um, of a uh, progressive action to get that hydration status back up. Uh, so the uh, quick way to figure out about how much you need is about one half of an ounce to one ounce per body weight, uh, of your body weight per day. Um, so those bottles are, I'm assuming, 32 ounce a liter bottle. Um, so male athletes generally we say we need about three to four of those, female athletes about two to three of those per day, just depending on your body weight. All right, so now how do we apply all of these? How do we take our individual nutrients plus our hydration strategies, put them together uh, for action? Um, this is a good chart talking more about that timing. Nutrient timing is very important when it comes to sports nutrition strategies. So three to four hours before, this is when we want a moderate sized meal um, as well as liquids to keep us hydrated. A good balance of those carbs, proteins, and fats because you have plenty of time um, in that window to digest, properly digest and not upset your stomach. Um, so over there on the far right, we have an example of a, of a meal. Two soft chicken tacos uh, with a corn tortilla, some guacamole, which has what in it? To help with inflammation. Good. Um, as well as water. Water with every meal, water with every snack. Two to three hours before, we're closing that window so we have a little bit less time to digest. Um, smaller meal with definitely some liquids. Lower in fat and lower in fiber. Why would we maybe want that as we're getting closer to competition? Why do we want to be lower in fat and lower in fiber? Because you can't break it down fast enough. So. Right. Good. Uh, so this would look more like a turkey sandwich, some fruit juice for some quick energy, and then some baked chips for that extra, extra little carbohydrate boost. Um, now I'm one hour before. Uh, what, what, what's going to work quickest for me one hour before? Fast carbs, good. Piece of fruit, sports drink. White bread. White bread. Sports gummies, good. Um, low in fat, low in fiber, and very easy to digest, but will top your fuel stores off. Um, and now something that you, or last on there, something that you might deal with often. I have an early morning um, practice or game. Do I want to just wake up and go? No. No, you need something. Um, but you, again, want to make sure that you're being easy on your stomach. So that's where a light meal or a liquid meal would come into play. good example of what we have here are the, the smoothies that Muscle Milk has. Um, they have a little bit of protein in it, but not, um, not too much to really hold you down. Um, but it'll give you that quick energy boost to get you going. Any questions on pre-competition timing of things, meal composition? All right. Uh, this top line, something I talk about all the time, practice your nutrition like you practice your training. You don't want to show up on game day trying something new, eating something new, because um, it might upset your stomach in a way that you're not expecting. Um, so nothing new on game day. Larger meal, two to four hours before. The less time that you have, the less food that you should eat, but you should be planning ahead. If, you have a, if your game's not until afternoon, then you should get two or one and a half solid meals in throughout the day. Um, and then a quick snack at the closer that you get. Um, liquid meals would be easier to handle than solid foods uh, if you have a shorter time or even if you have uh, pre-competition jitters. I've got a golfer that just on game day has no appetite, but um, we send them with extra muscle milks along because he can take that down and he's still getting um, good nutrients in, so it's something is better than nothing. Um, avoiding high fat, high fiber foods soon before exercise, and then obviously at the bottom, as we've talked about, drinking enough fluids throughout the day so that way you're not finding yourself falling below that uh, red line right before competition time. Alrighty, so we talked about what we do before and what we do after is extremely important. Um, we have, you'll hear us talking about the four R's uh, quite a bit refuel, repair, rehydrate, and rest. Think about exercise. What are we what are we doing to our to 
to our bodies. What are a couple of things that we're doing to our bodies? Why these would make up our four R's? What are we losing? You're breaking down your muscle. Good. So that's why we would repair. We're losing your fluids and electrolytes, so we rehydrate. Top one, we are losing our, or decreasing our energy, so we um, refuel with our carbohydrates. Good. Um, refuel muscles with carbohydrates, especially if you have another practice or game within eight hours, because you need to rebuild that, those glycogen stores within, um, within your muscles and within your liver. Um, repairing and rebuilding your muscles immediately after. Remember that brick wall from the very beginning. We broke down that brick wall, and we need to rebuild it. And there's an important timing um, time factor within 30 to 45 minutes, maximally up to an hour is your optimal window to be able to get that those nutrients into your muscles. Um, so we recommend between 20 to 30 grams of the high quality protein, including some leucine, to be able to build that wall up as best as you can. Um, rehydrating. Quickest way um, is if you do happen to weigh yourself before or after, um, we want to replenish your body with three cups of fluid per pound of body weight and sweat that you lose. Um, so there's some detailed you know, calculations that you can go into, or when we're doing our hydration testing, I will calculate out the sweat rate for a lot of the athletes so they can generally know about how much they're losing per hour. So you don't have to weigh yourself before and after every practice, you just generally know Two hour practice, I lose X amount of fluid, I need to drink this much afterwards. Um, and then rest. Sleep is huge um, for an athlete, for a student, um, for everybody. We recommend trying to get eight to 10 hours um, for teenagers. When your body is at rest and you're sleeping, that's when you're recovering. Um, that's when your body is recovering the best. Um, so rest is extremely important um, for your muscle recovery and for your overall health. Um, and now this just lists some good examples of recovery snacks. Um, obviously, our muscle milk protein shakes, bars, and smoothies. Um, and then pairing some food examples with them. So nut butter with a whole wheat bagel. You've got your protein paired with your carb. Greek yogurt, and then plus granola and blueberries to pair it with your carb. String cheese, almonds, and bananas. And then turkey jerky, mini pretzels, and, um, and an orange. What is on the, especially on this bottom one, can anyone tell me what um, is included in those snacks that might help with your rehydration? Sodium. Good. The sodium and the salt on there. Alrighty. So again, just kind of recovering with, or uh, repeating with those four R's, we also have the recovery trio and tips. So rapid recovery trio. Again, why would we have fluids as number one? Because we're losing, sweat. we're losing our sweat, losing our electrolytes. We need carbohydrates in that trio because we're losing our energy. Yeah. And then we need protein because we're breaking down our muscles. muscles. Yeah. Um, and then especially for two-a-day practices, making sure you have a recovery strategy in there is extremely important because the longer that you wait to get something in, the more sore you will end up being. Um, and then again, if you have a poor appetite, then a liquid option is definitely um, better for you. All right, so now we're going to talk about um, three key micronutrients. We just talked about macronutrients, and now we have three important micro ones. Can anyone tell me the difference between a macro and a micronutrient? I think for a micronutrient, your body can't produce them. For, yeah, what's, what's, the, what's the biggie between macro and micro? Your body can't uh, use micronutrients for fuel. Good, yeah. He said that your body doesn't use micronutrients for fuel. Essentially, micronutrients are not providing you with energy, however you need them to transform those energy nutrients into energy that your body will actually use. Um, so three that we're going to focus on today are calcium, vitamin D, and iron. Uh, what's the main role of calcium in our body? Bones. They help build strong bones and they keep your nerves and your muscles in tip-top shape. Uh, so calcium is found in milk, yogurt, cheese, leafy greens. Extremely important for a growing um, teenager so you can form those bones as strong as possible at a young age. And then its counterpart is vitamin D. 
vitamin D teams up with calcium in order to keep your bones strong. Um, they work synergistically. Uh, your bones will not be as strong and as healthy as they can be if you're deficient in one or the other. Uh, vitamin D is a little bit tougher to get through food than calcium is. However, it is possible in um, fish, like salmon, um, fortified milk products, cheese products. Um, it's found in the yolk of the egg. Um, mushrooms and seeds, but then also where's the, where do we get most of our vitamin D from? Sunlight. Good, the sunlight. So if, it, if you have an outdoor sport, um, or lucky us in California, if it's not these past two to three weeks, we have quite a bit of sun. Um, so you're getting lots of vitamin D that way. Yeah? Do you know what the um, use of sunblock does to absorption of vitamin D? No, that's a good question. I've never been asked that before. Uh, Trish, do you know? Okay. The use of sunblock to absorption of vitamin D. Well, the, the UV rays that come into the skin is what actually produces the vitamin D. So by putting sunblock on your skin, you're actually preventing um, a lot of that vitamin D production. So that's what has, kind of a contributing factor to a lot of people having vitamin D deficiencies, even if you're out in the sun, if you're covered up, you have a lot of sunscreen on, you're not producing as much. But you still need the sunblock. Sacrifice the cancer for yeah. the yeah. 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 However, you do generally see a lot more. There's definitely, we definitely do have deficiencies within a lot of our outdoor sports, but you do see more for those indoor sports or more for those areas that have really heavy winters that are inside a lot more. Um, and then just for general precaution too, where we do a lot of calcium and vitamin D supplementation is for like our track and field cross country athletes, any of those really high impact sports too is where they're gonna need more. All right, and last we have iron. What does iron do for us, especially as an athlete? Good. Carries oxygen through the blood to our muscles. So our muscles need to work, and they need to work off of oxygen. Iron helps carry that oxygen to those working muscles. Um, you get iron in your lean beef, red meat cuts, chicken, tuna, salmon, Eggs, again, if you're eating a whole egg, you're going to get more iron out of it than just the egg white. Um, our leafy greens and our fortified whole grains also have iron. Um, iron is more readily, readily absorbed from these animal-based products than it is from the plant-based products. Um, so you will see more iron deficiencies in vegetarians than you will um, in meat eaters. Um, but it is still possible to get enough iron through those plant-based products. Um, or in some cases, um, through supplementation. Question? When you say fortified whole grains, you mean because they added, added the iron to it? Correct. So it's not really a natural source of iron? Or not like taking a vitamin? It's, is it, it's kind is of... Is that like taking a vitamin? In a, in a sense, yeah. But you, I mean, in most bread products, uh, grain products, you're going to see it being fortified with these nutrients. Any other questions? All right, so now we're going to take a look at how we build this throughout our day. So we have three plates up here. First one is for an easy day or an off day. Um, what do we notice is different between this top plate versus our, our bottom plate here? Top one has more vegetables than carbs. Okay. There's, or more, more fruits and vegetables than grains. So fruits and vegetables, grains, they're all um, carbs. They're just different forms of carbs. So why might that be if we have a easy day versus this bottom plate is our hard day? Why might we have more or less grains? Less calories. Lower in calorie and also lower in that long lasting energy that you need um, for a long duration, which would be three hours or more. So this middle one is our moderate day. We increase the grain, the long sustaining energy a little bit more um, because your exercise duration is one to three hours versus an off day. Um, and then the bottom one, you're working out hard, it's a competition day maybe, a double day. You need that long sustaining energy that you're gonna get from those power pack grains. Uh, so this looks at the easy day a little bit more. Um, your calorie, overall calorie intake and your overall carbohydrate grain intake needs to be reduced. 
Um, still focusing on fluids and electrolyte intake to maintain that proper hydration. Um, and then having an adequate amount of protein to keep you full, to help repair your muscles on that day. Um, and then lots and lots of colorful fruits and vegetables on, on the left side here. Uh, one thing that we haven't talked about yet um, that I preach left and right to my athletes is antioxidants. Uh, you're gonna find those in really dark colored fruits and vegetables. So an easy day or an off day is our recovery day. We need those antioxidants to, to do the same thing that those healthy fats do, decrease that inflammation. So you want lots of color on this day because they are lower in calorie and also very high in those nutrients. And then moderate day, um, again, we, as we talked about, increasing our grains a little bit more for that energy, still focusing on hydration um, and adequate protein. You're always going to see at least a quarter of the plate um, having uh, lean protein involved. And then our fruits and vegetables are obviously so very important, but they're going to provide you with a little bit less of that long sustaining energy that the grains will. Do we have a question? Um, do you need to say ox uh, oxidants prevent cancers? Prevent cancer? Yeah. Yeah, they do have an anti carcinogenic effect, yeah. So those are going to be in your deep red, your deep green, deep orange. And you, the darker the color, um, the more rich that your fruits and vegetables are going to be in antioxidants. What about like? Almonds have them as well. Okay. Yeah. All right, and then our last play, our, our last play, the hard day, um, hard training, double day, preseason game day. Um, powerfully packed on the left side with our greens to give us that long sustaining energy. Still having our um, fruits and non-starchy vegetables, and our our mainstay staple of um, a quarter of the plate being protein. And what I have not pointed out, but on each of these plates, you'll notice that the healthy fats are down there on the side. Each of those increasing slightly with the amount of activity as well, um, because they are high in energy, um, but also have an anti-inflammatory um, effect. Effect. Need less of them on an easy day because they're higher in calorie. More on a hard day to help support that long sustaining um, energy. Any questions on any of these plates? You like those visuals? Can you see yourself going through the dining hall, building building that in the cafeteria? Yeah. What would the plate look like if the athlete's vegetarian? If the athlete's vegetarian, uh, uh, fish eater as well, or no? No. Okay. So vegetarians, um, you can build it uh, through pairing our plant-based proteins. Um, where a vegetarian diet gets a little bit more tricky is um, a lot of the plant-based uh, plant proteins are not a complete protein, meaning that they don't have all of the essential amino acids, so you want to pair them correctly. So a good example of that would be pairing um, beans with brown rice. You're going to get the full nutrient profile um, of those amino acids. So it's a little bit harder to get those complete proteins in as a vegetarian, but you can definitely plan for it. All right, and this is what we were talking about, um, trying to get our optimal energy to make sure it's not dipping too low. And that's done by eating every few hours. Um, the key hour range that I'll give my athletes is two to three hours. We want to have a meal or a snack in every two to three hours so that way we're not preventing those big uh, spikes in energy and those big dips in energy that we were talking about. So you look at this schedule, they're eating 7, 10, 1, 4, 7, and 10. And that energy stays pretty much high, obviously you're going to dip a little bit um, throughout the entire day. So here's a good eating, uh, a good schedule. Breakfast, blanketing with, or cushion with a snack, lunch, pre-training snack, immediately refueling um, with the recovery snack, dinner, and then a snack at night as well. Um, especially if dinner is earlier, you say you're having dinner at 5 or 6, not going to bed until 10. Having a nighttime snack right before bed is going to help you um, for the morning, especially if you have to have a morning workout. And now these next slides kind of lay out an example day for you. Um, some of the things that we've already talked about, but you'll notice that all of the meals and all of the snacks are pairing a carbohydrate with a protein to make that gold medal snack, um, adding in your healthy fats as well. Um, it's extremely important um, for every student, but especially a student athlete, to make sure your backpacks are packed with snacks 
Um, I'll always say your snacks are just as important as your books. You can't go to class without your, your books. You can't go to class without your snacks um, to keep you fueled throughout the day. All right. So, any other questions on meal timing before we get into healthy waking and healthy weight loss? Yeah. What about during competition or during practice? Very good question. So she asked about, what about during? Um, so again, during uh, your competition, say it's a long one, so your workout is longer than an hour or so, um, you're going to want to be refueling with carbohydrate, and you're going to want it to be one of those quick carbs. Um, so you can get that through a sports drink, through a gummy, through fruits, um, something that's going to work fast for you because at halftime, you really don't have that much time to still be able to digest. So you want it to be that quicker carb, um, as well as focusing on, a, on hydration. You want to be getting four to eight ounces or so of fluid in every 15 to 20 minutes throughout um, your workout or competition as well. Good question. Alrighty, so say we're trying to achieve a healthy weight. We need to um, cut down our weight just a little bit. There's the, there's um, healthy ways to do that, and there's some ways that we want to stay away from while we're while we're doing that. What do we do is still balance our meals out with our activity, um, still focusing on those plates, um, no matter what our weight goals are. We want to be altering our day depending upon our workout. Using your off season for um, for your weight management time. In season is not the time to, to do it because you could potentially put yourself at a performance, um, performance risk as well. Cutting back on our carbohydrates and, our, and increasing our protein intake is going to help keep you satisfied um, throughout the day for you to be able to cut back on your calories. Cutting out more of those refined sugars, the candies, sodas, higher fat foods, fried foods, um, and then eating often throughout the day. Um, sometimes it's a common myth that skipping a meal is going to help you lose weight when in all actuality it could, it's going to have your body hold on to what it already has or maybe even go in the opposite direction. Um, so that's why eating smaller meals more throughout the day is going to keep your muscles working, keep your body working um, to help you get hit that weight goal. Um, and what we don't want to do, as I already mentioned, is try to cut a lot of weight while you're already in season. Um, so that when we're not uh, we're not putting our performance at risk, um, and then we also don't want to go on extremely low calorie, low carb, um, and restrictive diets. Um, and don't go at it alone either. Um, seek out help from a registered dietitian or someone who has had experience in the area, so that way you're making sure that you're cutting weight in the right way. And then you also see a lot of athletes who need to gain weight. Um, there's some, uh, right ways and uh, not as good ways to do that as well. Uh, again, eating every two to three hours. That's a way that's going to help you put on some of that healthy weight. Always eating breakfast every morning and never skipping any meals. Um, bringing extra meals and snacks to school with you. Uh, having ready to drink shakes and protein powders with you. I gave you that story about my water polo guy at the beginning. Every night before bed, he'd have an extra protein shake, and that's how those liquids were how we would kind of sneak those calories in throughout the day. Because um, if you are trying to gain weight, you might struggle with getting full too fast. So you can find ways to sneak calories in. That is through liquids. So if you're making a shake, throw extra nut butter into it or oils. Use oils and, um, and oil-based dressings on your salads. Cook in olive oil. Because um, that's ways to get those extra good calories in without filling yourself up too fast. Um, and also making sandwiches on a bagel instead of a piece of bread, you're going to get um, more dense uh, calories out of that um, than you would from a wrap or just a piece of bread. Um, so there's little tricks and ways for you to be able to get those extra calories in without feeling like you can't take another bite. Um, any questions on healthy weight loss, healthy weight gain? All right, then just real quick here on some travel tips. Um, we're loaded with fast food places all around here, but the best fast food uh, stop would be a grocery store. You can run in and run out quick, get some fruit, ready to go vegetables. These days the produce section has lots of ready-made things to go. You can get in and out there, out of there almost quicker than a drive through sometimes. Um, and utilizing some of our, our muscle milk products for those quick grab and go um, on the road um, type of things. Restaurants. 
These are some words that you maybe want to avoid and some other words that you want to look for when you're choosing um, on a, a restaurant menu. Um, the healthy words to look for are grilled, boiled, steamed, roasted, um, stir-fried, looking at the types of sauces, um, tomato sauce versus alfredo sauce. Things that you want to stay away from are going to be our fried butter sauces, gravies, those thicker creamy sauces, because that's going to be the difference between those saturated and unsaturated fats as well. Um, be careful with your empty calories. We want to be drinking water um, most often when possible. Um, instead of getting the extra sugars from sodas, sweet teas, lemonades, um, be cautious on what you're filling up with before your meal. You want to get the most wholesome quality calories from your actual meal instead of the bread that's in the bread basket sitting on the table. Um, and then just be smart about the places that you do stop. Um, if you do have to go to a quick stop place, try to choose a sub place over um, a hamburger place to make sure that you're getting something that's going to support your performance. Um, any sh struggles that you all have when you're on the road for competition or any of that sort? Any questions? One handy little thing if you guys are ever down in, um, in the Westwood area or if you do travel throughout the, the West Coast side, um, I have developed an app uh, through UCLA. It's called Fueling Ruins, and we have a bunch of restaurants in the Westwood area and now all of our Pac-12 cities. Um, that you just click right on those restaurants, and we have tips like this, and we have the menus narrowed down. Um, so that's just one in particular that I obviously know of because we've developed it, but there's plenty of other apps out there too that you can use for on the go. Um, restaurants are posting nutrition information these days, um, so there's lots of resources that you can look to to make sure you're getting that performance based meal. Yeah? Do you know if there's a difference in benefit for ice water versus uh, room temperature water? As far as for like a health benefit or? Yeah, is there any difference? Not that. I'm like, yeah, I mean, as far as I guess, when you look at configuration, you want something that you can absorb really well. So, we have to turn or to chill. We wouldn't want it freezing ice cold because you can potentially get the ice in the head if it's super cold. But it's going to come out of your stomach and pretty much cool, right? Whatever is the most palatable, is the ice of death, whatever you prefer. If you prefer the temperature, great. If you prefer something more chill, then that's All right, just real quick, um, with NSF as well, we talk, um, supplements, any supplement that you're wanting to take, um, at least for me in the collegiate world, um, I will not recommend any supplement to my athletes that's not NSF certified. This is a third party testing group to make sure that all labels are, um, everything that's written on the label is actually what's inside of that, and, uh, that supplement, you know that it's safe for use um, for your body and also for any organization in which you're playing in. Um, and a uh, good side note, all muscle milk products are NSF certified, so you know that they're safe for you to grab and go. All right, two quick acronyms to send you away with before we head out. Um, in order to perform your best, you need to be faster. So our F is fill up on balanced meals using the performance plates as your guide every day. A, always hydrate before, during, and after exercise and throughout the entire day, focusing on that urine chart. S is start with breakfast. So those of you whose hands were down at the beginning of this, I hope tomorrow they can go up. T, think smart about your protein. Starting your day off with protein, having it balanced throughout the entire day, every meal and every snack. Um, think gold medal. Um, protein at bedtime to help promote that muscle recovery overnight. E is to eat often, every two to three hours. Don't skip meals, don't skip snacks to keep those energy stores up. And R is recover with the proper nutrition within the 30 to 60 minute window after exercise. And then our game day rules is sprint. Sprint ahead. S, you want to show up ready to win. Hydrated, fueled, and not overstuffed. Also with your practice strategy that you know is going to work for you on that day. P, plan ahead. Pack the right foods and fluids to keep you um, going throughout the however many games, however many hours you know you're going to be at the field. R, reach for those easily digested carbohydrates and fluids um, during and um, right before the games. I include drinks and snacks with sodium um, to replace those lost electrolytes and sweat. And nothing new on game day. Definitely plan ahead, practice your nutrition. And T, the timing matters. 
um, for after your game. So make sure you're prepared. If you know it's going to be a long time before you have dinner, make sure you at least have a recovery beverage or a recovery snack ready to go for you to kickstart that recovery before you get a full meal in. And here are some reliable resources that you can turn to uh, in order to get more nutrition information. First is the organization that Trish spoke about um, at the beginning of the presentation, CPSDA, made up of hundreds of uh, well-known professionals um, in this area. The NCAA, um, the Center for Drug-Free Sport, Anti-Doping Agency, NSF for Sport, it's a great hub for any of those supplements, um, and then this uh, this um, publication, the Nutrition Athletic Performance, it's the newest version that's out, which you can find online. Uh, great uh, thank you to those who contributed to the develop uh, development of this uh, presentation, especially Trish, standing over in the corner there. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to you all with any other questions that you might have. In the next slide, the... Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right, before I forget. All of these resources and more are put together in a, a playbook for you all. So you can access it on this website um, with the username coach and password win together. So definitely yeah, take a photo of this, write this down, um, so you can have all of these resources that we just provided you with. This will be updated on a regular basis. So right now the playbook lives there, which gives you even more in-depth information than the presentation, plus a lot of the same information so you can have and have it to easily access easily. We'll be adding recipes, we'll be adding to it um, as we progress through the program. So just uh, download it there. Okay. So we have any questions in the back? Yeah, this morning, uh, sodium. Is there, how much sodium is too much sodium? I know some of these drinks have a lot of sodium in them, so. Yeah, so sodium uh, recommendations obviously depend on your age, on your activity level. Um, Athletes need higher than the the um, than the recommended guidelines for um, the general public. Um, for a high school athlete, I mean, how much in a day, like 600 milligrams or? Oh, yeah. much higher than that. So the general recommendations are uh, between 1,500 and 2,300 milligrams. Athletes will be higher due to their sweat rate. Supplements. You recommend any kind of vitamins or supplements for young athletes? Um, a multi is something that never, never will hurt. Um, multis are increasing for us to just be sporting them into their protein shake in the morning. Um, we do want you to be cautious that obviously a supplement will not, cannot replace a healthy diet. Um, but a multi is a place to start unless you are seeing a deficiency. Um, if you are seeing a deficiency, then you'll want to supplement to regret that. Uh, do you know if there's been any thing that came out about supplements or fats helping with the nervous system, like concussions or things like that? Yeah, so more and more research is up and coming with that. Our omega 3s, EPA, DHA are helping with a bigger recovery time um, for, for concussions. Um, very recent research coming out on that. Still developing the exact protocols. Any other questions? If you were taking an omega-3 supplement, how, how much would be enough or too much? Oh, yeah. Let me keep that over to Trish. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, um, so you, a lot of recommendations are kind of depending on what the ultimate goal is for just general wellness for a high school athlete, depending on their diet, if they don't eat a lot of salmon or fish or probably not a lot of cod liver oil either. Um, it's, it's good to do, I think the starting point is like a thousand milligrams of combined um, DHA and EDHA. Yeah. yeah, so just a, a basic um, omega-3 fish oil that is that has the DHA listed is, you probably want to get it, you know, like over 200. All right, well, um, again, we'll be around afterwards. If you have any individual questions, um, please feel free to help yourself to more of the products. 
Um, I unfortunately forgot my business cards, but Jess does have my information where I can share that with you in conversation. Um, and Trish has hers over at the table as well. Um, so thank you all. Thank you.